um, June 20, variant 3. June 20, variant 3. A student effect, uh, investigated the effect of concentration on the rate of diffusion in model cells. Effect of concentration on the rate of diffusion. Then what am I going to change? I'm going to change the concentration. This is the changed variable. Cubes of agar <coughs> jelly containing the universal indicator uh, were used to represent the cells. Cubes of agar jelly containing the universal indicator uh, were used to represent the cell. The student used the scalpel to cut four identical cubes. I used the scalpel. This is a hazard. This is a hazard in the experiment. Uh, four identical cubes. Each cube had the dimensions shown. Each cube was green at the start, which means that the universal indicator gave a neutral pH. It was green. The cube was an, had a neutral pH. This is the size of the cube. 10 times 10 times 10. Calculate the surface area and the volume. What is the rule for the surface area? Side times side times 6. Side times side which is 10 times 10, 100 times 6, so it would be 600. The volume is side times side times side, 10 times 10 times 10, it will be 1,000. The student used the information uh, in the table to add the appropriate volume of one mole hydrochloric acid and water. Uh, he, le he left, state the unit. What is the unit for the final concentration? It is the same as the unit here. One mole per uh, cubic decimeter. This is the unit of the hydrochloric acid. So we will put the final concentration is a one mole per cubic decimeter. Okay. Then calculate the concentration. How do I calculate the concentration here? By cross multiplication. When you put 0 0.5, 0 0.5 from the hydrochloric acid, the concentration was 0 0.1. When I put 2.5 of the hydrochloric acid, what is the concentration? I will multiply 2.5 times 0 0.1 equals divided 0 0.5 it will be 0 0.5. The final concentration will be 0 0.5. Cross multiplication. Uh, one green agar cube was put into each test tube and the stop clock was started. He put one green uh, cube in each test tube, A, B, C, and D. This cube had universal indicator, which was green. So what will happen when you put it in acid? The acid will diffuse into the cube and it will change the green color into red. Of course, the higher the concentration of acid, the faster it will change to red. The student observed the color change in the agora cubes and um, from green to red. After six minutes, the agar cube in test tube D had not changed. He stopped observing. And this is the time taken. As we said, anything with colors is not accurate, so it's a source of error. These are the timings recorded. Convert the times to seconds. Prepare a table. We record your results. Same, same. Convert the times to seconds. Prepare a table. Record your results. What did I change in this experiment? I changed the concentrations here. 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0. What were my results? The time taken to change color. Yep, here I will put the concentrations. It was 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0. 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0. I should write the proper label, concentration, 
of hydrochloric acid one mole per decimeter cube here it's the time in seconds you will convert these timings to seconds and write them but he told you if it took more than six minutes you will write more than 360 and he said here that tube d did not change color after six minutes so in tube d you will write more than 360. the first one was 55 seconds the second one was 120 plus 5 so it's 125 seconds Four, which is uh, 240, 25, 265 seconds. What is the conclusion? Of course, the higher the concentration of acid, the faster the diffusion. So it took less time to change color. Higher the uh, higher concentration of acid causes faster diffusion. Higher concentration of acid causes faster diffusion. What is the purpose of tube D? Tube D had no acid. When, when it is empty, we say three points. It is a control experiment to compare results and to make sure that the change in color happened because of the acid. To make sure that the change in color happened because of the acid. This is why D, which had no acid, it did not change. Identify one safety hazard uh, using a scalpel to cut the cubes. What is the method of reducing the risk? How do I reduce the risk of using a scalpel? We use... Um, a uh, cutting board cut on a cutting board there is another another hazard here which is the acid using acid is another hazard and uh, how to reduce it will be wear goggles wear goggles a student calculated the rate of diffusion into the agar he observed that the acid traveled 2 millimeters in 120 seconds how can you calculate the rate rate means what is the distance it moved per second? How would you calculate it? He doesn't need the number. He needs the method. How are you going to uh, calculate it? Divide the distance by the time. It, it traveled 2 millimeters in 120 seconds. So what about in 1 second? What is the rate? So I will divide the distance by the time. Plan an experiment to investigate the relationship between the size of the agar cubes and the time taken for it to change color. Here, I want to investigate. I want to check the size of the agar tubes. If I change the size, what will happen? Same, same steps as always. I will get my cubes, five agar cubes that contains green universal indicator. It has neutral pH. And then I will put each of them, I will cut each of them to a different size, a different volume. Uh, everything else should be controlled, same temperature, same volume of acid, same concentration of acid. Measure the time taken for the acid to diffuse into the uh, cube. Use thermostatically controlled water bath. This is the improvement. I have to maintain the temperature. Wear goggles as a safety precaution. Repeat at least three times and calculate an average. This is question one. Uh, question two, it shows a comparison of the nutrient content between beans and nuts. A student was given a sample of food, wanted to know if it is from a bean or the nut. He decided to test the presence of two substances. What are the two substances that if I test it, it will tell you if it's a bean or not? Only the fats and the vitamin C will show me because the fat is only present in the nuts and the vitamin C is only present in the beans. So if you carried out these tests, one of them will give you positive, one of them will give you negative. So you will be able to, de to determine what type of food is this. If uh, the substance will be uh, fat, the food test is ethanol, 
emulsion test. The positive result is uh, cloudy. Here it's the vitamin C. The test is DCPIP. Positive result is colorless. Colorless. Okay. Uh, figure 2.2 shows the caterpillar. The codling moth damages walnut trees, reduces the yield. Uh, to reduce the damage of the walnut crop, they released wasps that can kill the caterpillar. Okay? Reduce the wasps that would kill the caterpillar. Uh, the effect of releasing the different number of wasps was investigated. Here, he changed the number of wasps released and he was measuring the percentage of damage. Okay. Plot a line graph on the grid of the data. Plot a line graph. Uh, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. The scale on the x-axis should cover till 4. The scale on the y-axis also should cover until 4. Uh, okay. Plot a line graph here. I put the number of wasps on the x-axis with the unit. Here I put the percentage, da percentage damage. And then I plot my points and then I join point to points using a ruler. What do the wasps do? They eat the caterpillars so that it does not damage your um, crops. Describe the pattern. What happened? What is the pattern of results? As the number of wasps increase, the percentage damage decreases and then it levels off. This is the two marks. As the number of wasps increase, percentage damage decrease, then levels off. And then he asked you a thinking question. Determine which is the number of wasps that is better to be released. As I can see here, when you increase the number of wasps, the percentage of damage decreased until a certain point. Until a certain point. Here it decreased again. But if you put more wasps, خلاص, it stays constant. It does not decrease further than that. So why would you put 3.4 wasps if 1.8 give you the same effect? So this is the number I chose. I will put 1.8 wasps because after that the percentage of uh, damage remains constant. Okay? Which number did I choose? 1.8 times 10 power 5. 1.8 times 10 power 5 because the percentage damage remains constant after that. It does not decrease further. So just one way, uh, this is the same question as we solved in variant 2. One way that the experiment could be modified to give a more accurate estimate. If I want to know, is this really the best constant? Is this really the best number of wasps? Is this the most accurate? How am I going to know uh, if this is the best number or not? I will repeat the experiment with a narrower range. Narrower range, just as we said. Take a narrower range. Try at 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. Repeat the experiment with more intermediate values. More values, okay, to make sure. Okay, the last question, walnut tree, draw the walnut tree leaf. Uh, as I can see that there is the top half, there is like a notch at the top half, and the veins 
I should draw it as much as possible here. The vein is divided. You should take care of this stuff. One divided vein and the notch. And as much as possible, the veins should be the same shape. Big drawing, taking half, more than half the space. Clear lines, no shading. And then he gave you the magnification question. Measure line PQ with your ruler. Multiply by 10 to give it in millimeter. Uh, the line was fifth, uh, 5 centimeters, so it will be 50 millimeters. Calculate the actual width. He gave you the magnification under the image. So it will be image over magnification 50 over 0 0.5, which will give me 100 millimeters.